Welcome back. We look now to Afghanistan, where at least 30 civilians were killed in U.S. airstrikes on Helmand province on Wednesday. The strikes were reportedly called in after Afghan forces and their U.S. advisors, quote, came under fire from Taliban fighters in a compound in Garmsir district. The NATO-led group claims they were unaware of civilians present in the area. Helmand province is one of 52 Taliban-controlled regions in the country. According to data compiled by the pro-U.S. Foundation for Defense of Democracies think tank in September, the majority of Afghan provinces are currently contested, while 143 are controlled by the U.S.-backed government in Kabul. Under President Trump, U.S. strategy is currently aimed at pounding the Taliban with airstrikes in an effort to force them to the negotiating table. Data from the Pentagon demonstrates the first six months of 2018 saw the highest number of bombs dropped on the country since the war began. The U.S. dropped nearly 3,000 munitions on Afghanistan between January and June of this year, 700 more than were even deployed during the war's peak in 2011. The outcome for Afghan civilians has been disastrous, as U.S. bombing, combined with attacks from the Taliban and self-proclaimed Islamic State in the country, made 2018 a record year for deaths, according to the U.N. At least 10 people were killed on Thursday when a truck bomb went off in Kabul, targeting a compound for British security firm G4S. As you see the accident, which happened yesterday night, several killed and injured have been transferred to Wazir Mohammed Akbar Khan Hospital. The number of the injured are 13 people and four others were killed. The health of the patients is normal right now and they have got good treatments. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, Afghan President Hamid Karzai announced he's formed a 12-member team prepared to hold peace talks with the Taliban. His declaration came during a U.N. conference in Geneva, at which U.S. Ambassador to Kabul, John Bass, claimed Washington would like to see the country succeed. The United States very much wants Afghanistan to succeed. It's manifestly in our interest to see Afghanistan stable, peaceful, democratic, uh, enjoying good relations with its neighbors, and no longer serving as a safe haven or a base of operations for international terrorist organizations. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, for his part in Geneva, said intra-Afghan dialogue will be the key to solving the crisis. The launch of a broad intra-Afghan dialogue involving the government of Afghanistan, the Taliban movement, and the entire spectrum of social and political forces is in demand. With Afghanistan in question, we're joined now by former UK MP George Galloway. George, it appears that increased U.S. airstrikes in Afghanistan aren't hurting the Taliban. In fact, they now control more territory in the country than any point since the U.S.-led invasion. Why is that? Well, the uh, 30 that you mentioned, uh, 16 of those were children. And you can imagine how radicalized, how extremized the Afghans uh, connected to those children and indeed in the broader area are feeling this evening. You can imagine how radicalized, extremized uh, their co-religionists are feeling all over the world. If you sow a dragon's teeth, you reap the whirlwind. And that's what's been happening now over this long period. The idea that you can bomb the Taliban, even though you're actually killing children, uh, to the negotiating table is entirely fatuous. These people have been at war for almost 40 years, first against the Soviet Union, now against the people that sent them into war uh, against the Soviet Union. The, the idea that the Afghans are going to give up fighting against the presence of foreign forces in their country is ridiculous. And as you say, this year, more civilians have been killed than in any other year, and the Taliban control more territory than they have done any other year since their defenestration in 2001. So uh, even if you take the morality out of it, from a purely practical point of view, uh, this policy isn't working. What is the purpose of, of U.S. policy in the country then? Because U.S. Ambassador to Kabul, John Bass, as you just heard, claims the U.S. wants the country to succeed. 
Well, if you want my honest opinion, uh, there are people in the deep state, in the military-industrial complex, that just want war without end. They don't particularly care whether they win that war or lose that war, as long as that war continues. As long as it continues, the military-industrial complex is a dripping roast from which even politicians and parties continue to feast. And the fact that on the fire are Afghan children is a matter of absolutely no moment to them. Because if they were viewing this objectively, they would have to conclude, as I have just pointed out, that whatever else you say, this policy isn't working. In the Helmand province, Britain uh, lost hundreds of its own soldiers and cost the lives of thousands of Afghans tried to destroy the poppy crop only to see the poppy crop multiply and the heroin addiction of people all over the world uh, fed. This policy is a complete disaster. If I tell you uh, that I uh, rose in the House of Commons in 2002 and taxed the foreign minister of Britain, Jack Straw, when I rose, that this war will not be over 15 Christmases hence. And I'm already a year out, and there's no chance of the war ending uh, this Christmas, next Christmas, or any Christmas soon. If the U.S. was serious about Afghanistan succeeding, and, and the U.K. and its partners as well, what would Washington do? Well, look, the Taliban insurgency is not the same as al-Qaeda. In any case, we're actually backing al-Qaeda in Syria right at this moment as we speak. But they are not al-Qaeda. They may be obscurantist, uh, uh, revanchist, uh, backward uh, people. I agree with all of that. But they have no intention of waging pan-Islamist war around the world. They just want to control Afghanistan. In any case, what happens in Afghanistan is a matter only for the Afghans. As long as Afghanistan is not a danger to the rest of us, it must be left to the Afghans to vote it out, fight it out, whatever they decide to do. And that's why I hope this process in Geneva will have some success. But it won't as long as the Western uh, people interfering in the conflict are completely insincere as to their purpose. You seem to be in agreement with Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov, who says intra-Afghan dialogue will be the key to solving the crisis. Former UK MP George Galloway, thanks so much. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe to never stop questioning more.